Are these new fangled things any good? Royal Frontiers is a beautifully designed, really fun turn-based combat game developed by Ratalika Games. You rally a band of three heroes to defeat enemies that get harder and harder as you progress through the procedurally generated map sectioned into three chapters. Your heroes are tasked with guarding a caravan of settlers and their belongings to ensure that their 45 day journey is safe and pillage free. Each day is designated a spot on the linear map and can be one of five encounters. A regular enemy encounter, an area mini boss encounter, an unknown encounter, which requires you to make a choice with consequences that may impact your party either positively or negatively, a treasure chest, a shop where you get to spend the gold you collect along your journey from defeated enemies, or a rest stop where you get to regain either your health points or power points. The map is divided into three rows, each with their own sequence of encounters. There will occasionally be points where you can cross to another row if you so desire, so the journey that you make within each area does take a fair amount of planning, and your decisions can change on a dime as enemy encounters can really drastically impact your need to rest up or avoid a mini boss. The combat in and of itself is very simple, which really makes this an easy game to pick up. The first couple of runs I played, I didn't last very long, but I got the hang of it pretty quickly. The game gives you a really quick tutorial, uh, text-based, which to be honest is really all you need. Like I said, it's an easy game to get the hang of. It's a little tricky to start with, but after two or three runs, I was getting to the end of the 45 days almost every time I played. Each of the heroes have their own stats, and it's really important to create a party where each hero complements the others. You have a strength stat, defense, health, and power points. And power points are used to activate one of your hero's special abilities on their turn. This can vary from stunning enemies, healing your party, or even increasing their strength or defense for a brief period. The health and power points don't fully regenerate after each day, so you really have to regulate how you use your abilities. You also have to time the execution of regular attacks and abilities, which which makes the game more immersive than most turn-based combat games. You also collect items like magic scrolls, potions, bombs, which you can use in your combat as well. Your heroes also level up as they progress, and they will learn new abilities and increase their stats. It does kind of even out towards the end as enemies get stronger as you progress, um, and the enemy variation here is really nice, some enemies being unique to each of the three chapters that you're in. Your heroes also have three item slots. A weapon, armor, and relic slot. Each of these you can find along your run, obviously weapons increasing your attack, armor increasing your defense, and the relics can give your heroes certain bonuses which really give you a bit of an edge in your run. It's game over only when all your heroes are defeated in the same encounter, and your final score is determined by how many days you last, the number of enemies you defeat, the number of bosses you beat, the amount of gold you collect, and the number of items you collect, and the points you get at the end of each run um, goes towards the collection of blessings. At the start of each run, you can choose three blessings which really help you along your run. Unlike blessings though, the items, relics, hero abilities, and so on, that you collect or unlock in your runs aren't permanent. I get that this makes it a little bit more regulated so that you kind of start each playthrough at the same level, but it does also feel like a bit of a bummer when you finally last 45 days and you don't really get to keep anything you collect. I would have liked to see some kind of maybe an in-game shop where you could permanently buy the relics or even the weapons and armor as well. There are three heroes that you have unlocked from the start and three that you unlock later in the game. Personally, I really prefer the ones that you collect rather than the ones you start off with. The only issue here though is that it would have been nice to have a few more heroes to unlock, just to give players a bit more variation in their party combination. I ended up getting these unlockable heroes after about three runs, um, so I either would have wanted to add more heroes to unlock, or make it a little bit more difficult to unlock the three that are in the game already. With a visual aesthetic similar to that of games like Cadence of Hyrule, Royal Frontiers is a simple game which is actually a lot of fun. Its procedural generation gives a lot of fun replay play value, and there are also achievements in game uh, to help keep you hooked as well. All in all, this game is really fun, dynamic, and visually pleasing, and I have very few qualms. If you like turn-based games, or even turn-based RPGs, and want to just enjoy the real meat and potatoes of the combat without the extra nonsense from most RPGs, then I can't recommend Royal Frontiers highly enough.